Fantastic. Moving on, our next uh, speaker is Lawrence Krauss. No pressure. That's awesome. He is a theoretical physicist, uh, is a cosmologist, professor of physics. He wrote The Physics of Star Trek. He wrote A Universe from Nothing, two books you have to read as soon as possible. His first car was an orange Honda CVCC. Yes, and his first uh, music he bought was uh, CCR Down on the Bayou, which is kind of perfect for today. Uh, please welcome one of the best hats in science, Lawrence Krauss. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's such an honor to be here. It's the second time. I remember the first time we came here when Richard Dawkins and I flew in here. We had no idea what to expect except rain. And, um, and it, it, I spent most of the day with my wife among the crowd watching, and it's been so heartwarming for me to meet everybody. And, and, and such a privilege to be treated so warmly that I want to thank you. And I, I really want to ask you all a question that, that I've been asked all day long, which is, could I just take a little photograph? <laughs> just, just one, I promise. Won't take long. Okay, there we go, okay. Okay, smile, okay. okay. Oh shit, somebody moved, okay. That's all right, no, it's okay. So I want to ask some questions about reason and whether it's reasonable. How can it be reasonable for anyone, anywhere, to want a young girl who's thirsting for knowledge to keep them from enjoying the joy of discovery? How can that be reasonable for anyone? How can any reasonable interpretation of morality allow such an obscene travesty? More generally, how is it reasonable throughout the world that people are denied basic human rights simply because they are women? How is it reasonable that anyone would want to stop two adults who love one another them the legal right to express that love and commitment and sharing their lives together in the open, regardless of their gender, their religion, their color, or anything else, their shoe size. How can that be reasonable? How is it reasonable to argue, as a father who initiated a lawsuit in Florida did, that children should only use the bathroom that God chose for them? although it's presumably the game, same God that intended for them not to be able to enjoy that choice. As my late friend Christopher Hitchens once said, how could a reasonable God require us to be born ill and then command us to be well? How is it reasonable that children are at risk of harassment? Some people feel when ten, transgender children use their bathroom but at the same time, these people allow their children to go somewhere where the data suggests they're at a far greater risk. Catholic Church. How is it reasonable that U.S. taxpayers pay $800,000 per year so Congress can have two chaplains who open the most sec that most secular of all institutions over there, the U.S. Congress, with a prayer? But Dan Barker was barred from giving a secular invocation when I flew here today, I brought the New York Times with me and I saw the Freedom From Religion full page ad. It's an amazing organization and they're suing U.S. Congress for good reason. Is it reasonable to bar a representative of 23% of the U.S. population from the People's House? How is it reasonable in the 21st century that the state of Kentucky can give $18 million tax break to Ken Ham to build a life-size replica of Noah's Ark. But government isn't supporting the Starship, for example, that's currently being designed and which I'm happy to be, in, to be involved in, that will send a small satellite to the nearest star in the lifetime of the people in this room. That's something we're supporting. And they don't support the amazing feat of my friend Elon Musk, whose first stage rocket, if you watched it last week, landed on a small floating platform from space in the middle of the ocean. It's amazing. 
Is it reasonable that the United States is the only advanced country in the world where one entire leading political party has as part of its platform the denial of basic science, the science of climate change? How is it reasonable that journalists let the putative standard bearer of that party, Donald Trump, call climate change a Chinese hoax, but not widely publicize that his company has requested that two of its waterfront properties have the right to build higher retaining walls to combat rising sea levels that are due to human-induced climate change? How is it reasonable that I'm talking about Donald Trump today? How is it reasonable to claim that a small group of microscopic cells have greater rights than the human being they're a part of? How is it reasonable that Catholic hospitals can be allowed to choose to let women die rather than end their pregnancies or give them access to contraceptive health care? Standing here in the shadow of the building that houses the U.S. Constitution and Bill of Rights, and in the shadow of Lincoln, how is it reasonable to claim that the denial of fundamental human rights for some people is an act of personal freedom? These questions are, uh, are unfortunate, and the answer to all of them, of course, is it's not reasonable. And it's caused many people to be resigned to a miserable future. Well, the far future is miserable. Get over it. But we are gathered here today to celebrate the fact that the answer to these questions, while it's a resounding no, we are here because we want the world to know the answer is no. And I don't really mean any disrespect or, or, or any pretense here, but I can't resist because of the historical significance of where we are today. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day reason will determine public policy. I have a dream that someday children are encouraged to reach their full potential by providing them the tools they need to learn and encouraging them to question everything. I have a dream that someday the human rights of all citizens will be equally valued. I have a dream that someday no ideas will be sacred, that there's no idea that cannot be subject to ridicule, satire, and open questioning. I have a dream where religious institutions which use most of their funding to grow their base are taxed like all other businesses. I have a dream where science is not a threat, but an asset for everybody. We won't get to this dream simply by rallying. But rallying is more important than many of you may realize. It's fun to be here, and I've enjoyed meeting so many of you today. And I get hundreds of letters, however, from children and adults every week from around the world who tell me they watched the last Reason Rally because of the unbelievers, and they now know they're not alone. But more important, they know they're not bad people simply because they question the existence of God. But today's rally alone is not sufficient. Some of the, us on this stage, like me, are fortunate to have a fairly big bully pulpit. But each and every one of you can have an impact on the world. From your schools, your offices, your churches if you attend them, go forth from here and feel emboldened. Don't accept nonsense with silence just because others around you do. Don't vote for candidates who base their claims on ideology alone, whether they're from the left or the right. Speak out openly object to teachers who refuse to teach proper science. Don't buy into the idea that it's inappropriate to criticize religious ideas just because they're religious. Feel free to openly ridicule any idea that deserves ridicule. Remember, criticizing ideas is not the same as criticizing people, except in the case of Donald Trump. Openly demand every place and at all times equal rights for all people to nurture their own humanity and achieve their full potential as human beings who can think, feel, love, and question. If we carry the excitement of this event today, we'll only do it if we make our voices heard 
so that everyone who questions orthodoxy, and in some deep place, that really is everyone on the planet. So all those people will know that they're not alone, that they're not bad people. Only then will the dream of reason as a guide for public policy have a hope of becoming real. If we do all this, then in the words of my good friend, a fellow atheist, Nobel Prize winning physicist, Steven Weinberg, then only then will you be doing God's work. Thank you very much for the privilege once again of being here and the joy of sharing all of this with you. Nothing could be more important for me. Thank you very much. Lawrence Krauss. Lawrence Krauss. The dream of reason. I love that. I love that. The dream of reason. I just, I just realized something. All these planes that are flying by, you seeing all these planes fly by, like a quarter of the people on all of those planes are atheists. Every single time one goes by, just sort of like wave and just say, hey, we're here. 25%.